So um, what I'd like to tell you about uh, is a couple of ways in which uh, the University of Birmingham goes about uh, measuring uh, its impact. Um, and here are the two ways that we use. Periodically, as a university, uh, we do our own assessment um, of primarily economic impact. So I'm going to show you uh, a, a bit of that assessment to show you the sorts of measures that we're able to obtain. And then also periodically, we take part in a national assessment actually of our overall research, but for the purposes of today's session, uh, looking at the impact of, of our research. So I'll tell you, um, some of you may well be familiar already with the UK national um, assessment exercise, but I'll tell you a bit about that and also hopefully show you some of that. So here's uh, an extract from um, the latest impact report that the university itself commissioned. Now, I should say we, we commissioned this uh, at the end of 2016. It was published in the spring of 2017, but these things are always somewhat backward looking. So these figures relate to the academic and financial year 2014 to 15. So it'll actually soon be time for us to redo this, uh, to redo this study. But the, the bottom line in terms of the economics, uh, I'm an economist, is that the study found that we contribute uh, 3.5 billion pounds each year to the UK economy. And we do that in a variety of ways. We supp support employment uh, in the city and in the region, so about one in every 50 jobs. Teaching, our teaching alone contributes uh, just over 1.3 billion pounds. Our research contributes almost uh, uh, 900 million. You'll see that at the, uh, the, the bottom. And at the time, there were some uh, rather tricky politics developing in the UK where um, the government in power at that time was questioning uh, whether we should be as open to international students as we are. Our answer to that is absolutely we should. So we actually also showed the economic benefit of the international students who study at the University of Birmingham. So those are some of the economic measures that uh, we capture in the study. There are some other measures which we look at. One is the, the pipeline. So if you like uh, the, the intellectual property of the university, the number of patents uh, the university holds, uh, the number of spin-off companies generated by the university. And then on the right hand side, there are some measures, I'll be saying something more about this in just a moment, but some measures of the social and cultural impact of the university. So over a quarter of a million people attending public events at the university, the um, uh, volunteering that our academics and our students uh, engage in, and some of the cultural assets that we bring to the city. So three museums, an art gallery, a uh, botanic garden, and so on. So how, how, how does this work? Well, actually we engage uh, an external economic consultancy to do this. There's a consultancy called London Economics who are something of a specialist in the economic impact of higher education. And so we commission London Economics roughly every four to five years. So as I mentioned, this the, the last study was published in 2017 and covered the financial year 2014-15. We actually find um, the outputs of that study to be very useful in discussions with government to demonstrate that uh, we're not, of course, we're an academic institution, uh, but it's not just academic outputs that we um, have. We actually have economic and social impact. And this gives us uh, an evidence base to use to discuss with uh, government and politicians. Um, the, the economic impact is, the methodology for that is relatively well developed. Um, uh, uh, you know, like all economists, I, I love to debate methodology. So there are a few things there that uh, I might do differently if I ran the study. 
Um, but it does a pretty good job, I think, of capturing economic impact where it's um, more limited, I think, is trying really to get good metrics for social and cultural impact. And I'll be really interested to hear the views today of how others think um, uh, that might better be captured. But let me move on now to um, the other aspect that I mentioned, which is this national research excellence framework, it's called, which is the UK wide uh, exercise to evaluate the quality of research. It distributes money. Um, so about uh, it, in this financial year, about 12 billion realis, uh, about 1.7 billion pounds. That allocation of funding is based on quality and quality has three aspects to it. Uh, about two thirds is based on the academic outputs, publications, which get graded by peer reviewers. About 10% of it is based on a statement that you put together describing the research environment of the university. But what I want to say more about is a quarter of the exercise is based on impact. An impact uh, is assessed through case studies. I'll say more about that in a, uh, uh, I'll give you more detail on that in a second. And what, a, what an impact case study is meant to do is describe how research um, carried out over a specific time frame has resulted um, in a change, had an effect on or benefited culture, the economy, the environment, health, public policy, quality of life or society, using qualitative and quantitative evidence. So you can see it's quite a broad definition. Uh, it's been uh, a feature of the research assessment exercise since 2014. We're just about to go to the second iteration of it. So in March uh, 2021, we'll be submitting um, for the next exercise. And um, anticipating something that I'm gonna say, it's still work in progress in a sense. So this latest exercise is looking at impact that research has achieved over a seven year window from 2013 to 2020. Um, importantly, there needs to be underpinning academic research and that academic research can have taken place uh, in the 20 year window from the year 2000 to 2020. Um, you need to roughly, uh, this isn't quite uh, accurate, but it's near enough. For every 15 staff members in a university, you need to supply one case study. So for a large university like uh, Birmingham, that's quite a large number of uh, case studies. And the case studies are looked at in terms of their reach. So that's to say the extent and or diversity of those who have benefited from the impact coming from the research and the significance, the degree of that impact. You need to summarize the impact. You need to describe the underpinning research, give the references to, the, uh, to that research, give details of the impact, and then sources to corroborate the impact. Uh, uh, and if you're interested, uh, the URL that I've given there uh, is actually all of the case studies submitted by all UK universities to the last exercise in 2014. So the 121 impact case studies that Birmingham submitted for that exercise are all there and you can go and read, uh, you can go and read them all. Okay, so this is one of the 121 impact case studies that um, uh, the university submitted for the 2014 exercise. Uh, this particular one was uh, done by a, a professor of philosophy essentially, um, who works on uh, ethics, governance, and aesthetics, uh, and carried out research on genetic ethics and governance. Um, uh, I know that one topic that this group of people are interested in is evidence that research has affected policy. And here's an instance where uh, Professor Heather, Whit Heather Widow shaped policy making in the UK in the area of genetic ethics and uh, biobanking. So you can see it gives a summary of the impact uh, talks about the underpinning research, references to the academic uh, research, so the actual papers that it was based on, details of the impact, 
And then finally, and importantly, the sources that will corroborate that indeed um, the research has led to, uh, to impact. Um, so let me just go back to uh, my, my last slide and with this I'll finish because I can see I'm over time. So what, what I'm going to conclude with is uh, just uh, one, one slide um, talking about some of the methodological um, challenges that we face uh, with um, impact. It, it really has, um, I think, shaped the way that we think about research in, in the UK in a, in, a positive, in, a, in a positive way, and also given us uh, as universities a good evidence base um, to the, the challenge, the, the methodological challenges that we've uh, we we faced uh, on on these case studies are, I'd say fourfold. The first is, it's it's made us realise that if you want university research to have impact, um, then you really need to design your research projects from the outset to have impact. You can't just hope that it will happen. Secondly, it's made clear that you have to gather evidence of impact as you go along and not afterwards. Um, the third is that in doing that, it really exposes how clear the link is between research and impact. So um, it's particular one area which um, uh, is very much an issue for for my academic discipline is that it, you can't just say that my research has had policy impact. You really need to show a very direct connection between the academic research and the policy change that's been put in place. And although we've, we're getting much better at it, I think it's still fair to say that we're learning what good looks like. So what is a really uh, compelling impact case study is something that's still an evolving picture in the UK. And with that, I hand back to the chair.